Technos was an underrated game developer and publisher in Japan that had a mascot named Kunyoku. He was a high school student, good at sports and liked to fight. Founded in 1982, Technos' first batch of games were arcade games like Minky Monkey, Dommy, Mysterious Stones and Bogey Manor. Then in 1986 they made Neketsu Koha Kunyokun, a beat-em-up, possibly the first scrolling beat-em-up ever, that would be known worldwide as Renegade. Renegade was their first success, but their biggest international success would come a year later when they released a game called Double Dragon. Double Dragon was a big success, getting ports to just about every console and home computer. Double Dragon 2 was a big hit too, by Double Dragon 3 interest had cooled a bit, then on Super Nintendo there were Super Double Dragon, and then a crossover with another by then doomed franchise, Battletoads. By the time Double Dragon 5 The Shadow Falls was made, made to ride on the fighting game wave started by Street Fighter 2, Double Dragon was dead. But back to Kunio-kun. With the success of Double Dragon, Technos took the opportunity to release some of the Kunio games internationally. First out was Super Dodgeball. In the Japanese version you guide Kunio and his schoolmates through the dodgeball tournament, but in the international version it's more generic and you can choose your side. The Japanese art style is kept though. You can see the relation to Renegade, but it's more shrunk and facial expressions are much more comical. River City Ransom, known in Japan as Downtown Neketsu Monogatari and in oddly sensitive Europe as Street Gangs, is the game that Technos is known for, even more so than Double Dragon. Probably because Double Dragon was distributed and published by other companies like Trade West. In River City Ransom, Kunio's rival Riki's girlfriend has been kidnapped and it's up to Kunio and Riki to save her. Internationally, they were renamed to Alex and Ryan. Playing two players simultaneously is a big part of what makes this game so good, but also the sense of free roaming. River City is a pretty big town and you're free to explore it. Of course, there will be plenty of rival gangs in your way, but in the town plazas it's always peaceful. In there the B button is deactivated and you can't even jump. Also in there are shops, and buying food and other things increase your stats. I think this was the first beat em up to use RPG elements. The graphics are cartoony and amusing and the music is very good. How can you forget enemies saying barf when they die and funny gang names like the generic dudes? The game also has a password system, but holy shit, this must be the worst password system ever. 66 places, normal and capital letters and numbers. If you have a typewriter at home, or a very neat writing style, this might not be such a problem, but most of us don't. Damn. Despite the password system though, River City Ransom is a classic game. Nearly everyone loves it, including me. But did you know there was a sequel? Of sorts? Downtown Special, Kunyokun no Jidai Geki Daiyo Senin Shugu. A far too long title, it's a semi-sequel to River City Ransom. It's set in medieval Japan, I'm not exactly sure why. I read two explanations, one that it's simply set in medieval times and you're playing as Kunio's ancestor, and another explanation that this is in current time but Kunio and the schools or whatever are doing a medieval reenactment kind of thing, when some girl is of course kidnapped and Kunio needs to rescue her. The game has several improvements over River City Ransom. There's a map, a partner that follows you computer controlled even if you're playing solo, and you have more attacks, like a very useful uppercut. The city parts are now open to fighting. The map is crucial, because to beat the game you have to search and beat up all the enemies. Remember the horrible password system from River City Ransom? Well here, Technos was nice enough to add battery saving. Just remember to hold reset as you turn power off. I have no idea why you have to do that, but... Eh. Instead of increasing stats by shopping and eating, you level up here by beating enemies, and in the menu you choose which attributes to prioritize. Numbers appear when you kick ass or when you get your ass kicked, representing loss of HP, which is convenient. The graphics are better than RCR as well, and the layout is not nearly as flat, now there's stairs and hills everywhere. There's a lot of variations to the areas too, with towns, water with streams, clouds, desert and underground to name a few. There's just as many weapons as before, and it's very fun to pick up a barrel to beat people with, but if you get hit while carrying it, it falls on your head and you get stuck for a while, which I find very amusing. The music, again, is very good. My favorite tunes are the sunset area and the shop. The game has a couple flaws, the biggest being slowdown. Whenever too many enemies are on the screen at the same time, it gets very slow, especially if you're playing on two-player mode. The other flaw is, of course, that it never came out internationally. This is a very good game. Personally, I think it's even better than River City Ransom. But why it doesn't have a title screen, I do not understand.
Apart from the beat-em-ups, Cunha made himself a fine career in sports on NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy. I've already mentioned Super Dodgeball, but there are many, many others. The first sports game Technos made after Super Dodgeball was Super Spike V-Ball, but that had no connection to Cunio. Neketsu Koku Dodgeball Boo Soccer Hen, however, known to us as Nintendo World Cup, did. Like Super Dodgeball before it, the game was altered from playing as Cunio and friends to playing as a country of your choice. Depending on the region, the game came out before, during and after the real World Cup in Italy 1990. This was the first Cunio Kun game I played, although I didn't know that at the time. There's no judge, and you're free to tackle as much and as hard as you want. It's fun to do that, and if you tackle them enough, they pass out and just lie there during the rest of the half of the game. The graphics are the same as the previous NES Cunio games. The controls are pretty advanced for its time. You control only one player in the team rather than alternating through the whole team. It's similar to Libero Grande in that regard, but here you get some added strategy. When you're not in possession of the ball, you press A or B to tell your teammates to tackle, pass or shoot. When you have the ball, you press B to shoot and A to pass. Simple. One reviewer I have a lot of respect for gave this game a D- and said that a friend of his couldn't figure out how to shoot. I don't understand that. Did he try pressing the buttons? There are also super shots that are all but unstoppable and simple to do. Give the ball away, tell a teammate to pass you, and then press A and B simultaneously. Except West Germany's super shot that zigzags and can go above the crossbar, the other super shots are almost guaranteed to result in a goal. It's very fun to use, but not so fun when it's used against you. You can also do diving headers, which can also be used to travel faster, even if it does look very silly. Down in the status bar you have a convenient little radar. I think this game was the first to have that. One thing that gets annoying though, is that the game takes too long to be over. In the international version, the halves are 4 minutes to Japan's 2, and I prefer the 2 minute limit. The music is fantastic, there are many great songs. Furthermore, at least in the international version, you can use the 4 score or satellite to play up to 4 player multiplayer. I've never tried with 4 players myself, so I'm not sure if you're restricted to 2 versus 2 versus or if you can play 4 players on the same team, but it's awesome nonetheless. 2 player multiplayer is also awesome. You can either take on the world together or play against each other. For my money, this is the best football game ever, and definitely the best one on NES. There's not that much competition on the NES though, Nintendo's own soccer is too simplistic and Tecmo Soccer Cup? It's an RPG. It's pretty much like Final Fantasy X's Blitzball, and we all know how fun that was. Nintendo World Cup had a sequel in Japan, Kunyoku no Niketsu Soccer League. It's basically the same game but with even more strategy and weather effects like wind and rain, and better graphics. The music is still great and I do like the ability to control the guy on the title screen. The third and last Kunio sports game to come out internationally was Bikuri Neketsu Shin Kirok Haru Kanaru Kin Melo, or Crash in the Boys Street Challenge. It's a little like Techno's version of track and field, but of course being Kunio it's more violent and has the high school theme. Not exactly my cup of sake. The first event reminds me too much of the dreaded Back to the Future 3 on Mega Drive, though I can say the scrolling effect is very nice. Downtown Neketsu Koshin Kyoku Sore Yuke Dai is a pretty odd game. You race on foot through streets, houses, swim through sewers and more while hitting your opponents and try to finish first. It's a pretty fun little game and the music is good, but it's also pretty hard. This is a game where nice guys don't finish first. Neketsu Street Basket Ganbare Dunk Heroes is a good basketball game, with all the violence associated with the Kunio games. One interesting thing is that there's three hoops stacked on top of each other, and of course the top one is worth the most points. Even though this is a game made exclusively for Japan, the stages are all in the US, including Florida's Cape Canaveral, San Francisco, New York, Texas. It's a good game, but I'm not very into basketball myself, and the only other basketball game I've ever played was the minigame in the Flintstones. Finally, there's Ike Ike Neketsu Hokibu Subete Koronde Dairantu that was supposed to come out internationally as Crash and the Boys Ice Challenge. On the NES hockey front there's more competition from the likes of Nintendo's Ice Hockey and Konami's Blades of Steel. Blades of Steel. But this game is a very strong competitor. 
It's violent, but did you expect any less? You can freely beat your opponents down even if they are girls. They're super shots, although they're a lot harder to do here than in Nintendo World Cup. Like in the Japanese version of Nintendo World Cup, you play as Kunio's school team versus a variety of opponents. Other schools, a kendo club, baseball players, girls, and more. After you defeated a team, you can use their kits. I'm not sure how that works for the girl team. Even though you can beat your opponents, there is a referee in this game. If you attack too much, the player goes into a kind of rage mode and then starts punching with his fist, and that can lead to a penalty. Apparently smacking people with wooden sticks is okay, but the punch is too far. The strategy elements from Nintendo World Cup are gone here, and the game has a more arcadey feeling. According to the title screen you can play four players, but I'm not sure as how that would work, because I'm not aware that it exists a four player adapter for the Famicom. When you're playing two, however, the second player has to be the goalie, and that's definitely not as fun as playing on the same team. There's still a versus mode though. The graphics are as good as you expect, very good, and there's also a lot less flickering than in Nintendo World Cup. The music is also great, again. Technos was really good at music. I hold them in the same high regard as I do with Sunsoft, Konami, or even Capcom. The sports games on Game Boy were mostly ports of the NES games, save for one. A beach volleyball game called Neketsu Beach Volley Daio Kunyokun. Neketsu Kakuto Densetsu falls in between the beat em ups and the sports games. It's a fighting game taking place all on one screen, but you can move around freely and play 2 versus 2. It can get pretty crazy and there's plenty of moves, but overall this game is pretty forgettable. After Crashing the Boys, Techno started releasing less and less games internationally apart from a few like the Combat Tribes and Geom Cube, which is a game similar to 3D Tetris on Virtual Boy of all things. But Technos did make some games for the Super Famicom too. A couple of sports games like Kunio Kuno Dodgeball Daio Zenin Shugo and Downtown Neketsu Baseball Monogatari. But the more interesting ones are Shin Neketsu Koha Kunio Tachi no Banka and Shodai Neketsu Koha Kunio Kun. Shodai Neketsu Koha Kunyokun, I view as a mix of Renegade and River City Ransom. You can walk around freely, pick up stuff and kick ass. It also reminds me of Grand Theft Auto in that you can beat up random innocents and when you get knocked out you appear back at the hotel, like the hospital in GTA games. It's not that good though that all attacks are placed on the Y button. Y to punch, pressing Y when at a distance kicks, press Y as an enemy attacks to block, etc. This isn't Atari, the Super Famicom had a lot more buttons to use, so use them. The game has the RPG elements from RCR or... You get experience and level up when beating people down, and random people, including women, start fights with you, whenever and wherever. This kind of takes the place of the random encounters in regular RPGs like Final Fantasy. When a fight is started, you can't leave the screen until either you or the enemy is down for the count. A two-player mode is included, like in RCR, and if you're alone, another guy follows you, like... It's very easy to accidentally punch him, but luckily he's invincible as a CPU partner, so swing away. He's not super useful though, and he reminds me of Tails. The graphics are good, I especially like the scrolling. The stage kind of moves in a 3D way. The music is entirely decent, but not as memorable as on NES. You save by talking to a guy at the hotel. Man, all this school violence. Must be hell to be a student in Japan. Shin Ketsu Koha Kunio Tachi no Banka, on the other hand, is a straight sequel to Renegade. It expands a lot on the storyline and the graphics are very good. The game takes you on a journey to find out who framed you for a hit and run crime, but in the beginning of the game gets you thrown in prison. Eventually you learn that the doppelganger framed you and that it is in fact your own lost brother. During the course of the game, Ricky and his girlfriend and your girlfriend join you, and you can at any time press select to cycle between which character you want to use, and they all have their own life bar. The only bad thing to this is that when one dies, you all die. You have to keep checking your life bar and switch in time to avoid game over. If you play two player, it's sort of like a double date. Of pain! The game of course increases in difficulty over time, and when you finally confront a brother, if playing on easy mode, he tells you to be a man and come back when playing on normal. So you have to change to normal mode to play the rest of the game. Every so often there's a stage on a motorcycle in which you fend off pursuers by kicking them off their bike, 
which reminds me of Road Rash. You get many, many passwords, basically after every door or screen you pass, but at least they're only four numbers long. I was very impressed by the story and the graphics of this game, but disappointed that there are no weapons to pick up at all. But this is a very good game. The last Kunio games to be made were a dodgeball game for the Neo Geo Arcade and Kunio no Uden, a puzzle game in the style of Collins or Puyo Puyo. I think Technos is a very underrated game developer, and it's a shame that more games of theirs wasn't released internationally. In one sense they were a one-trick pony, but what they did, they did well. Today, a company called Million owns the rights to the Kunio brand. They released River City Ransom EX on Game Boy Advance and ports to some of the sports games also on GBA, although only in Japan. Nintendo World Cup and Super Dodgeball got remakes on the Nintendo DS, and a true sequel to River City Ransom was announced on March 18th, 2011. Downtown Naketsu Monogatari 2 is being developed by Miracle Kids for a Japanese release on WiiWare and PC in 2011. I'm certainly looking forward to that. I can't wait for more fun beatings, free roaming, awesome music, and barf. <laughs>